<clears throat> testing, testing the audio and the video. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Let me know if you can hear me. It looks like you should. The levels are up there, and uh, you know I'm seeing video on OBS stream elements. So, yeah, let me know if you can hear me. What's going on, Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today we're going to be diving into. Vegas Effects, which is the special effects program that came out in Vegas Post. Um, Vegas Post, if you didn't hear about it, there wasn't really much advertising about it. Um, it is basically a software package that includes Vegas Pro, Vegas Effects, and Vegas Image. And Vegas Effects is kind of like After Effects, and Vegas Image is kind of like Photoshop. They have a little bit less features than... Uh, the After Effects and Photoshop's for sure because, you know, this is the first rendition of these programs. After Effects has been around for years, same with Photoshop. So they've had time to build effects and uh, all that stuff and all the different features. And so since this is the very first year Vegas Effects and Vegas Images have come out, then they are not going to have as many things. So it still has a ton of awesome stuff to do. And what we're going to do, if we jump right into it, we are going to... Jump in here, and we're going to make some lower thirds. What's up, BZ and Alan? Everybody in the chat right now. How y'all doing? So, let me know if you can hear me. I mean, I'm sure, pretty sure y'all should. Y'all should be able to hear me. Um, if not, that would be very upsetting, because I just did that whole thing. But, no worries. Today, we're going to make some lower thirds, and we're going to dive around and look at what Vegas Effects has to offer. So, yeah. Dude, yeah, I'm excited for it, too. It's pretty awesome. I've, I've had the fortune of being able to mess with this, and, oh, yeah, it's it's really, really similar to After Effects, uh, where you can make composites and special effects and all that stuff. But today we're going to... Awesome. Today we're going to just, just basic do basic lower thirds. Um, in the future, I'll have more tutorials about you know more in-depth things like way more in-depth things like kind of like marvel superhero effect stuff that's going to be in the future um and they're going to be on a per video basis but today we're just going to kind of dive around and people watching this after it's already out they're going to be able to see what vegas effect looks like how it feels how it runs um and yeah it's pretty cool so let's just dive right into it i guess so down here we're going to do a new composite shot and just like in After Effects, you get to tell it what you want to name it, give it a template. You can create custom templates um, up to 4K. It looks like it's the highest it can go. Oh, wait, look at that. My bad. 8K. You can go up to 8K, 100 frames per second. What? Yeah, that's going to be intense on a computer. So I'm not even going to remotely do that. <laughs> now nah, we don't need an 8K lower third. Um, so I'm just going to stick down to the good old-fashioned 1080p. Let's do 1080p 60 frames a second. Cool. And the duration, let's only make it, you know, like six seconds. Something like that. So that. Okay. Square pixels. Hit OK. And there we go. It says loaded it up, our black background, which you could change that. It's not always black. If you go over here to the options, you can change the background color. You can enable checkered, which is kind of verifying to you that it's transparent. Um, the checkered won't show up in your render. So right now, technically, there is absolutely nothing in the background. And so if we add things to this, they're going to have no background. Brandon, this is not included in Vegas 17. It's its own product called Vegas Post. But Vegas 17 is included in Vegas Post. It's a software package, basically. So um, Vegas Post includes Vegas 17, Vegas Effects, and Vegas Image. So that's kind of what that goes, how that is. Um, so yeah, this is uh, it's special effects. So we're going to dive into it. So we're making lower thirds. Thanks for joining as well. Um, oh, it's the other way. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So let's just take a look at the menu, you know, for a bit. We got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so for our menu down here, we have our timeline, which if we hold control, we could zoom into and zoom out of, which is nice. Um, on the left side here is where we're going to have all of our shots, you know, clips, images, shapes, all that stuff's going to be in this area. 
Um, so, you know, let's add a couple things just to show you. So I'm going to add some text right here. I'm going to call it lower thirds one. Okay, so there. So see our text got added down here. So if we were to add, you know, images and videos, they'd come up here in the, in the media bin, and then you can drag and drop them onto your project as well. So we have our lower thirds one right here. So, uh, whoops, I actually made another one. Delete that. Entirely. Bam. So we have lower thirds. Accidentally made. I accidentally deleted the one I did. Jeez. Okay, here we go. Lower thirds one. Delete this one. Okay, so we got our lower thirds one. Um, so you can adjust the font of this too. You know, obviously that would be terrible if you could not. So, you know, if you go over here to the, or was it right here in the text in your window down here, there's a lot of things going on, which you can, you can remove these windows as well. You know, in your panels, you have a lot of panels that, were, that are here. And then you can open up different workspaces as well. So we're going to remove the panels. Um, yeah, I, I don't think Vegas Post has nodes. So I'm going to... Lifetime, history, we'll keep the history, that's fine. We're going to go to text, and of course you have your general text editor, so I'm going to make this, uh, make it like uh, Adler, a little scary font. Okay, and then uh, once you can change your font, right, you can change the color, of course, let's make it. How about that, lower thirds one, bam! Faded gaming, what's going on? I am choosing it. So up here, you have your little selection tool for your current uh, selected effect or selected media. So I have my text selected, and up here I can adjust, move my text with this. I can just drag the scene around with that one. I could add, you know, another layer of text. I can mask with a square, mask with a circle, and then mask with a pen tool. So those are awesome here. What is up, Majestic? So we are... We're making some lower thirds right now, if you couldn't tell. Select everything. Let's raise the font a little bit. You can click and drag raise the font, or you can choose a specific number, whatever you wanted. Yeah, it does. It looks a lot and is, acts a lot like After Effects, which is perfect, because I don't like paying a subscription to After Effects. And so if you could buy something outright and have it forever, that's kind of the, the motto I like going. We got lower thirds here, and uh, let me change the background. Let's take away the checkered so we just see this. Bam. And now we, so we're going around the menu right now for everybody just joining. Um, it is, we have our timeline down here, which you can drag and drop your, the, the length of your media, you know, just like in After Effects. And we have our media options right here. When we drag and drop our new media, they'll be right here in this project little timeline deal. Uh, down here we have our RGB, which we're not going to go over that right now, but basically the color correction tools, they have those in Vegas effects as well. And so it has your uh, vector scope, your parade, you ha it has your waveforms that you could do. And so we don't need to, um, we don't need to go with that because, you know, that's going to be in a later video for sure. I'm going to get rid of these panels. Get rid of those. Oh, I'll keep them there for right now. All right, I'll take out the scopes. Bam, there it is. Okay, that opens up a lot more stuff. So we don't need that. But next, for the lower thirds, let's uh, let's make it look cool. Um, let's make it move. Yeah, let's make it move. So let's select my lower thirds, and then if we drop down our little arrow down here, we see all of our options and properties and attributes that go along with the text, and that will be there with other events you add in. And so we don't need any of this. So what we're going to do is you know, change the, the position, and we could, we could probably do the scale too. So right now this is just in a set position at zero seconds, so we're going to drop it up to um, where are we? Cool. Okay. So that is a long timeline. Let's get that down here. We don't need it to be 30 seconds. Why is it 30 seconds? So we're doing in... One second, how about that? Bam. So if you want, you can add keyframes and stuff like that too. Uh, this is actually Vegas Post, 
This is well, Vegas Post. I'll, I'll, I'm totally fine with describing this to everybody who asks about it because it is pretty confusing. Vegas Post is a package that includes Vegas Pro, Vegas Effects, and Vegas Image. All three of those are in the Vegas Post package. So this is Vegas Effects, which is its kind of its version of After Effects. So I have my position of lower thirds right here. I want it to end up right here after one second. So if I wanted to do that, these little circles beside the opacity, anchor, position, all that stuff, if you select it, that creates a keyframe. Cool. So then we drag this marker back, and we can drag it on the X scale way over here. So now we have made it move, which is pretty cool. Have that. And then let's, uh, oh yeah, one cool thing I want to show y'all is that they have, you know, After Effects has that motion blur button. They add the motion blur button right here. You just select that. And all of a sudden you have automatic motion blur. Oh man, that is super awesome. Love that effect right there. So yeah, we go. So even sometimes you're playing it, which I noticed this earlier. So you see, you see the motion effect. You see the motion blur right here while it's paused. If you go down to options, or no, I'm sorry, full, and you do playback quality, if you do it final, right here in the little qualities, then as you're playing it, you will see the motion blur. Have that. Okay. Seems a little slow, so we're going to do it at 20 seconds. Let's drag that keyframe. So one thing I've noticed uh, that's different with this program than After Effects, because I've used a bit of After Effects before, and one of the most difficult things inside After Effects to do was... Um, copy and paste keyframes, which I, you think that would be an easy thing to do. Well, Vegas Effects allows you to do it now. You can select this keyframe, right click, copy and paste them anywhere you want to go. That makes it so much better. Oh man, like just, ugh. I, I've had so much difficulty in After Effects trying to copy and paste certain things, and you, so you can't do it, so you have to, uh, you know, choose everything just right, and maybe, you know, read whatever your position is right there, and then redo it again. But yeah, copying and pasting keyframes is awesome. Super awesome feature. I'm loving it. Okay. So we moved our lower thirds. So that's still a little bit slow. I want to do even quicker. I want to do it at you know, half the time. Let's do it at right about 30. So bam. Go. So what is up? Everybody joining us. We're making some lower thirds. So I got my thing coming in right there. So another cool thing. Uh, that they added, which has been amazing, is the value graph right here. If you see it over here on the right, so if you select your keyframes that you want, I want to select both of these two on the timeline, and then we click value graph, we can see uh, how are the speed and how the how our basically movement goes. You know, if we wanted to make it smooth, if we wanted to go fast or slow, you can do that as well. So if I select um, Vegas Post is out, yep, I'm on it right now. Um, so we select our two keyframes, and then we right-click on the keyframe. We can select the temporal interpolation, and that is basically we want it to be smooth, which I'll select that. And you see it go a little smooth curve right here. I'll zoom in a little more for y'all. There. Okay. And then, uh, so let's say if I don't want smooth, if I want to do, I can do smooth in, and it's kind of a smooth you know, an upper curve that slows out, so it's like a fast fade. Um, but one thing I like is that you uh, get to do a manual bezier, so you can actually make this graph however you want by selecting that, and then you drag these bad boys all around. So you can have a custom curve uh, that's, you know, the way you want it. So if I want it to be extremely fast and then slow for, like, the last bit, I can do that. But so that's... We're going to do, let's just say, what does it look like to be, you know, fast and slow down? That looks pretty cool right there. That. Yeah, great, great, great. That. And so let's just say from this point on, you could switch out of value graphs and go back to keyframes. And we make the scale go a little bit bigger from here. So we do our initial keyframe. I added that by selecting that circle. And we're going to make it just go a little bit bigger for, let's say, about right there. So you can either add another keyframe by a shortcut. If you do Alt-T, that adds a keyframe. Or if you were to not have that, if you were to just change a value, if you were just, just, if you were just to change the scale, it automatically adds a keyframe as well. And so we have that. 
Um, and you notice that it grew from this bottom left part, and that's because our text was set on the left side of the paragraph. So we can change that if you don't like that. So I'm going to change that. And if we select our text, and we do our paragraph, we center it. It actually changes our position, which we'll have to adjust a little bit. But that allows us to scale up from the bottom center, or from the, from the center. Now we can also, um, let's move that right here. So there we go. Let's move back to our, open up our things down here. Drink that text in your video from the lower thirds. So my name, so I don't have to make one. Oh yeah, okay. You know what, I can. I mean, if y'all have Vegas Post, I can upload this project file for you guys, you know, after we're done with it. And so you guys can have it to make your own lower thirds if you wanted to do that. Um, yeah. Oh, and Vegas, Pro, Vegas Post is out, Majestic. Um, it is, you know, an initial new software price. And I believe, oh, excuse me, if you were to... Uh, buy it outright. If you had no other versions of Vegas, it would cost a thousand bucks. I think nine hundred ninety nine dollars, which is pretty steep. Um, but again, that's of course new program cost. If you already have Vegas sixteen or Vegas seventeen, um, then you can upgrade for much cheaper, much cheaper. Uh, you can look in the link. I put the link in the description below. If you check that out, you can go to um, those options and see what your financial pricing options are. If that's the case. Or they also have the monthly subscription model. I think it's like $20 a month. And then you have all of it. Vegas Pro, Vegas Post. I'm sorry, Vegas Pro, Pro, Vegas FX, and Vegas Image. All three of those for 20 bucks a month. So that's another option as well. Uh, but of course, that's all in the link below. So you can check that out. Um, oh, so 500 So that's half the price if you upgrade. Oh, you can get it without Vegas Pro. Well, that'd be pretty cool too. So let me go with that position. Where are we at? We had the position right here. That let's uh, move that a little bit more to the center. There we go. I like that you can easily just adjust things. It's so seamless at this point. So we're gonna grow it up to about right here. Even seems quick. So let's do even right there. Dragging these keyframes. Go. Okay. So then from here, we want to, let's just twist and uh, make it go away. So we're going to do the rotation next. So we'll do initial keyframe rotation of where it's at. And then we are going to spin it for 10 keyframes. We're going to drag the spinning. Let's make it do two, about three. Three total spins. And then we will shrink it, scale, down to nothing. And then just to verify, we're going to go with here. Let's do the key opacity keyframe. So right now it's 100% opacity. And then here we'll make it 0% opacity. So we do this. Maybe even slow it down. See, another cool thing about keyframes. So let's go ahead and we, if you click and drag on your timeline, you can select individual keyframes as well. So I'm going to select just the last three and then drag them out, and that slows down this, right? Yeah. Man, I'm loving that motion blur. I don't know about y'all, but just having the having the ability to toggle motion blur on and off just by, just like that, easy peasy. Love it. All right. And so that's one way of making some lower thirds. Um, so yeah, let's... uh. That was a pretty decent little, you know, little little deal for two, three second motion third, or two, three second lower third. So let's look at a little bit more of the options right here. So we just looked at the basic adding text and then manipulating text and looking at some of the things here. Now we can also go into the effects. So let's just say, I'm going to drag a different thing in here. Uh, let's see. Let me drag a clip in here and we'll just kind of add some effects to it. We're not going to go deep into the too much details because there's so many effects. So we're not going to be able to see all of them, obviously. Drag this into here. Drag uh, one of the raw videos of me in here. Um, so let's drag into the timeline. Let's get it. 
Move it our text. Let's drag this bad boy in here. Oh, big old zoomed in on my face. Everybody loves that. Okay, so. Right about here. Let's drag the beginning of our clip. There. Drag the end of this one. So we're going to change the scale of this. So we don't want it to be that big, obviously. I'm going to drag and drop it down. Uh, what's going on, everybody? How are y'all doing? Just in case you're joining us now, uh, we've made some lower thirds, which I can show you right here. Um, this is Vegas FX, which is a part of Vegas Post, which has just been released. Um, Vegas Post is a software bundle that includes Vegas Pro, Vegas Effects and Vegas Image, which is Vegas Effects is kind of like After Effects and Vegas Image is kind of like Photoshop. So those are the three things that are in that consist of Vegas Post at that point. So what we just made were some lower thirds right there. Just the fade in, zoom in, fade out, twist out. And now I'm about to show some just general effects that they have here. So I'm going to change the scale of this because it is way too big. Let's draw down look at that i mean just scratch my chin thinker so we got some effects there or we don't have any effects so if we want to go to effects on the left hand side right here where the text is we can go up what's up q gaming and we can see our history of course in this tab of what we've done just in case you want to go back you're like how did i make that effect oh you can go up to the history effects here's our big list of effects so there may be a couple of extra ones that I have that um, aren't in this, maybe like the new blue and some of the sapphire stuff. But if we were to, you know, go over just the general things, we can't, we can't, uh, I don't think we can filter it out by just what has Vegas effects. So I'm just going to go over, you know, some of the cool stuff. So uh, they have 360 video editing and 360 video effects as well. So um, I don't think this makes it 360. I think this is for... Um, so we drag and drop these effects onto our clip. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So, so yeah, that's a that's an effect for 360 video. That's the effect for that. If you drag an effect on your timeline, you don't want it. You can select it down here in the effects and just delete it, and then it's out of there. So let's look. This is special effects, correct? So let's go down to animation. So they have different animations as well which look kind of like uh, transitions in a way. So let's see what these look like. Yep, that's what they are. So they're transitions. Don't want center right. So animations full of transitions. Um, we have fly in and fly out. Some of the basic stuff. <laughs> Push text. Some of these are text layer only, so you wouldn't be able to throw it on a video. Let's see, left roll. Oh yeah, that's way too slow. That's gonna it looks like when you drop an effect on there, it's for the length of the entire clip, which is pretty intense. So I'm gonna take away left roll. Uh, okay. Mm -mm -mm. This is just the video effects part. So let's uh so animation looks like it's just transitions right now. Um so let's get out of that one. And then audio, if you have audio you can do certain effects, change the pitch, echo. Stuff like that, which I don't have any audio in this one right now. We're not working with it. Behaviors, so we can, let's just trim this clip actually. I want to cut it right there. We could splice the layer. Control Shift D. Splice it too. Uh, we don't want that. D. We right click here, all the options if you right click, which again, I am very new at this as well. It only came out what yesterday so yeah let's see. yeah it does seem like it's a little more user friendly in certain things like and that's probably a big thing to do with after effects having a lot more options inside of it you know um it's it like after effects of course is still is used by professional you know marvel people like that use after effects and whatnot but um this is, you know, Vegas and FX Home when they combined and made these programs. Um, you know, they're taking a really good step towards it, and I think that's pretty awesome. 
So we have behavioral deals, which look like if you drag that onto your clip, um, you can adjust your video or your object to do, uh, like this one just says gravity, so it's just a fall. If you wanted, you could change that around to how quick you want it to fall, how intense the gravity is. You could basically add physics to your object. So if you had like a you know picture of a basketball, then you could add gravity on there, or you could do throw on there, and then you can adjust, basically tell it where you want it to start, where you want it to land, and the physics will automatically go with it. So that's pretty cool as well. Now let's get, let's get this off of y'all. Let's see some other effects we got. Of course, we have our blurs down here. Uh, we have a, a good variety of blurs. So if you if you added motion blur with like this little button right here, the little motion blur button, if you were to if you didn't want to do that, you can actually add the motion blur effect, which gives you a little bit more options inside motion blur. So let's just say we drag that on here, and we go down, and we go to our optical flow. So here. We could change a lot of, uh, of details, you know, window size, sigma, iterations, um, and just, you know, down samples, start, uh, or sorry, the down samples, and then where to start the down samples. So basically how much frames go out bef before the next frame hits. You know, you could do a lot of awesome stuff. Um, what do, let's see what the comments are saying. No, it is definitely not a free program. Um, it's it's a brand new, its own if program. Um, if you were to buy the Vegas Post outright, I believe it's a thousand dollars right off the bat. But if you were to already have owned Vegas 16 or 17, then you just do an upgrade fee for cheaper, much cheaper. And I think uh, what BZ was saying, you could buy them separate um, for cheaper if, if that's possible. Links in the description if you wanted to check that out. It'll link you to the website and tell you all the purchasing purchasing options. Also, you can do a subscription model if you don't want to afford the thousand dollars. You could do I think it's twenty bucks or so a month, and then you get all of these as well. So it's really cool. All right, so we have our let's get it rid of motion blur. So we have those up there, our blurs. We have a ton of them, and then we have different channels, uh, which channel time shift, color space converter. Basically messes with your RGB channels, um, you know, hue, saturation, luminance, all that. You can mess with the channels. You have your color correction options, which are, you know, for your colorists and whatnot. Uh, you can adjust, you know, basically give create your own version of a custom LUT. You know, give yourself some mood, change the contrast ratios, make it look more like a movie. You can do that with your color correction over here. Color grading, it has even more in-depth um, specific color tools that you can use, a whole color grading option. Um, so let's just say we wanted to, you know, use hue colorize, drag that in there. Drag it on our clip. We can bring it down. If you wanted, uh, if you if you didn't want to mess with all the little controls in this small window, on the bottom left where the media tab is, if you do controls, then you can uh, see all of the properties for your specific layers as well and the effects that are whatever you're selected so if i select my text this is now all the text layer properties where you can easily click and add effects in a long list here so you don't have to go through the effects thing you can say oh what do i want to do distort okay i'm going to go down here and we'll do bulge and then bam and you can add that on there no problem i'm going to select unselect my text select this one in there so it's, you know, with hue colorize, it, just all the different hue, hue saturation, luminance effects, you could do that with color grading. Um, depth, so you can make depth mass, depth, depth mats. Distort, you know, just the regular old distortion stuff, bulge. Um, if you do, so these are all, looks like they're animated. I think these are the animated ones too. So we drag on here. Uh, yeah, so these are animated um, as well. So if we were to do fluid, energy distortion, heat distortion, they're all an animated version. Let's change this down. While I'm streaming, it looks like it's pretty intense. Draft, see what that looks like. Yeah, yeah that's, that's framey. So, yeah, the, uh, that's something that's pretty cool about that is the distorts. I like all of those. I've messed with those. So let's see if I get that out of here. And then let's go to some more fun ones. You generate, so we have things we could generate. Let me see if I can. Uh, 
So generate. So we have different automatic effects you can look at you can throw in here. Let's do 3D extrusion. We drag that under a clip. So it does and this is taking a while. Yeah, I think I may have dragged a way too long of a clip on here. Yeah, I don't know if I have oh you know you know what? I got a clip. So I'm gonna delete this one. I know where a clip is. Let's do do, 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 do. Some smaller so we can actually see these effects in real time. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna drag a clip of my wife running like the flash. So I, I dragged it into the project bin and I'm gonna drag it to my timeline. There we go. So we got a real small clip. So go past the lower thirds right there. So Oh. I was locked in there. I have to figure that out later. So let's move the that. So now we have just my wife running like the Flash. So we'll just mess with this. So that. And now we'll throw some of these cool generate effects on there. I wish I could afford to hook people up like that. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, if I were that rich, if I had that kind of screw you money, I'd buy everybody a program. Three D extrusion is not what I was thinking it was. Do what animate lasers is. Okay, so we have a little laser down here that we can make the start point and end point, and we could add keyframes. So if, like somebody shooting lasers, we go choo choo like that. That. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Add those in there. That's a pretty cool little effect. I like that. So there. Um, oh yeah, another cool thing I found out. It, it will, and then the generate effects is you can make uh, waveforms, audio spectrum, and audio waveforms. So let's just say you have music playing. You know when you like look up music on YouTube and you start playing it, um, then you can you see like the waves go up and down and whatnot. Um, oh yeah, that makes sense, BZ. That it's for text and titles. That, that, that makes perfect sense. I can add that on there later and see what it looks like. Um, so let's just say you have an audio, you can make an audio waveform video as well, you know, like they have on YouTube. So that's pretty cool. A little effect right there. Um, I think, what is audio spectrum? Is it some, something similar? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you have music playing and that's all you want your video to be is that little audio spectrum, you can do that too. I like that. Let's see, what else we got? We got, looks like we got some effects, little cloud effects. I'm sure, once we blur that down, the opacity of it. Deep. Mm -hmm. Appearance. Make a little cloud. So, wow. like this is in a room full of clouds. You know, there's certain cool little things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we, yeah, I didn't know it had it either. Um, so let's see, we got, you know, a lot of these effects are for, you know, if you have a green screen subject as well, you can add drop shadow, um, you know, fractal noise. Let's see, we dropped that on there. Oh, same, looks just like clouds, just a different shape. Well, let's see what a grid. Okay, drag a little grid on there. Sure, that could be useful in certain things. Hyperdrive. Okay, look at that. So you can make a hyperdrive little effect, like going in space in Star Wars. Uh, automatic letterbox adding on there to make it look like it was shot in a wider aspect ratio. That's pretty cool. Kind of like a movie, I'd say. And then let's take that off. Uh, light sword. Oh, yeah, the non copyrighted light sword. So you can drag these. You don't have to mess with uh, individual. Uh, I'm sorry, individual points down here. You can actually click and drag these. Pretty cool as well. So we want to give her a shoot lightsaber. Go into the clock in the wall. We could do that as well. Nice. A four point as well. So I guess that affects uh, thickness of it. I'm assuming. 
Oh, yeah. If you wanted to make the wow little thing as well. That's pretty nice. Appreciate that, Q Gaming. You the man. Everybody, also check out Q Gaming's channel. That guy does some streaming, and he does his own stuff. He's he's growing. He's growing. He's a prospect. You gotta look at him up too. We have our picture in picture. We have our pond ripple, um, and then we have let's see, pond ripple is just the okay. Pretty cool looking. Yeah, these are a lot of really cool effects. Radio waves. Let's see what that does. See that being useful some other time. Reflection, sphere, split screen while masking, text, tile. Yeah, so that's a pretty cool little bit of generate stuff. Uh, let's look at some geometry. Text layer only. So, let's see if we have our. Bring back our text layer. Let's see what these the bevel and extrude does. Let's see. Makes it shoot out, giving it a 3D look. I see that. Okay. What else we got? Gradients and fills. Okay. So color, color in the entire screen. Okay. So now we got some looks. It looks like here we got a. Let's see what a grunge looks. I just see that grunge. Let's see what dot matrix look is. Oh. Okay. It looks like it blocks out like 60% of the pixels. Film damage. They give it a vintage look. Like a scary horror movie. Okay, cool. And then what else we got? <laughs> Film grain, flicker. Let's flicker, flicker is like a... Yeah, like if lights are going in and out. Again, horror movie look. Got a here. Got a shake. Let's see what the shake looks like. Okay, so it gives us some camera movement. So that's kind of like that, uh, almost like that S shake on uh, for the sapphires. So you can do the speed and the amount. Oh, I see. Pretty cool. You can add motion blur to it as well. Cool. Oh yeah, muzzle flash generator. I don't even think I saw that one yet. You know, there's so many so many things to look through. We'll find it though. Get shake out of there. <laughs> I guess it's probably under lights and flares. Looks like flares. Hello. I guess it isn't. Okay, so we should have light streaks, light rays. What does it look like? Light flare. Okay, there you go. So you can control a a light flare. Give your give your look some more realism. Okay, so I'm not seeing um muzzle flash one yet, but we'll find it. It should be there. So then we got some new blue stuff, which if you guys haven't, there's free plugins that you can do for um, Vegas Pro and whatnot. Uh, what's up going on, your Amon? Um, so in, I have a video on my YouTube channel to show you how to get some free plugins, and one of the ways is for downloading new blue effects for free, uh, legally, totally legal. You get a key and everything. Uh, it's on my channel, but I guess it looks like it implements inside Vegas uh, Vegas Effects, which is pretty cool. You know, I only thought I only knew it worked for Vegas Pro, but now it works for Vegas Effects as well, which is really nice. So, you should go check that out for sure. And we have, let's see, particles and simulation. Here we go. I think here's all that stuff. Fire, is that what it is? Gunfire? Let's see what that dropped out on there. Oh no, that's just fire. Legit fire. Okay. Catch the whole screen on fire. Oh, I, gunfire's right under it. My bad. Look at that. There we go. I see. So this is where you animate the uh, gun, the muzzle fire. There it is. Gunfire. Oh, and it, it applies it on its own layer as well. So it's uh, it is not. It doesn't attach to your 
specific um, project itself. So same with it looks like the particle simulator. There's a little icon next to it. That, mu that must be what that means, that it drops it on its own layer. So the gunfire, let's see what that looks like. Let's transform this. The scale, we can do break that. We can make the gunfire real long, shrink it. Okay, so and then I'm sure we can do the opacity, which will be like that. So you keep it. It looks like you just keyframe this stuff, and then it makes your. Uh, that's how you can make your automatic muzzle flash. And I'm assuming once you, you can just copy and paste that anywhere you want. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it it would absolutely make sense for it to be on its own layer. Cool. So we got an automatic muzzle flash on there. Get that out of there. And then we got what else? We got blood spray. That one attaches to it. Okay. Oh, I see. Look at it. Just blood onto a wall somewhere. That looks pretty cool. I like that. And it looks like yep. You can adjust that one like crazy. Particle generation. Oh, when it starts, number of particles. Make a shit ton of blood. Pardon my language. <laughs> a little bit of blood, a lot of blood. Nice. So let's get out of there. We have gunfire. What well, lightning and electricity? Let's see what that one looks like. Oh, nice. That looks pretty cool. Oh, I could see tons of uses for that. You could drag. The different point of where you want it. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Man, that is cool. Nice. See what a particle simulator is as well. Okay, its own little. See what we can do with that. More material. Cast shadows. Cast reflections. Board lights. You can change the material around, change the time of it around. The emitters. Shape of the emitters. Trajectory. Oh. Okay, cool. You have your own little uh, particle generator. Nice. I like that. Let's get out of here. Let's see. Got rain on glass, which is an attachment effect on here. Look at that. So it's uh simulates like you're getting raindrops on your camera. Nice. Okay, so let's get out of lightning electric. Cool, cool. We have a shatter effect. Okay. Oh look a 3D shattering of a whoosh. almost like you're busting through a brick wall. Pretty cool. See what we could change about that. I'm sure, we could change a lot. Ran on glass. Get that out of here. Pattern. Bricks. Ah, oh, there you go. Hex. Oh, like little like hexagons. Extrusion. You can change the extrusion level. Okay. So the thickness of each each individual piece. Let's see what else we got. Make a custom size. Map. I'll mess with that later. Go start not mess up the whole thing. See, we can make that other stuff. Let's see the position. We got that over here. Rotation. Oh, look at that. It rotates the whole thing. Turns your thing into a 3D image. Oh, I could see some really cool effects for that. You can imagine like, oh yeah, I could see some really cool stuff. Like somebody shoots a bullet and then all you do is uh, turn here and then the bullet goes through it. You're just like, Boosh. oh, that's gonna be cool. I like that. Cool. Okay. up something okay there we go all right so there's that i'm sure yep position you could change that where you want oh that's the whole thing 
depth. Okay, all right. Appearance, front. Okay, so you can make a change of color of stuff. I'm not seeing any difference there. I'm sure I'd have to go way into details of it. Motion blur, we can add that. Oh, look at that, you can add motion blur as well. Uh, make it even more realistic of an explosion. And that's cool. Okay. That's a really cool effect. I like the shatter one. Y'all think about that. Um, I can see a lot of effects for that. Like if I'm doing like some sort of video game montage and you shoot the bullet, like poof, just turn the screen sideways and blow that thing. Up. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. Quick 3D. That is bonfire. Oh, it's its own deal. Okay, so let's see. Its own layer. Let's see what bonfire looks like. Nice. Oh, look at that. Just fire special effects. You throw something on, catch something on fire, just throw some fire on it. That looks pretty good, too. I mean, you could tell it's just a little bit generated. Maybe it's just maybe it's just because it's super smooth. What if we add motion blur to it? That looks even more realistic right there. Well, that's awesome. Okay, so we also got falling debris. Let's see what that one looks like. Let me take off this one because that's adding a lot of intense computer resources. Take away shatter. See, so that's pretty cool. A little falling debris. Add that. Man, I'm liking these little special effects here. Fire explosion. Let's see what that one looks like. That. Okay. Okay. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. I bet we changed the fire up a little bit. Because you're going to have to color grade all these effects, no matter what. Because you can't have, like, a dark, gloomy scene, and then you're just, like, a big old bright fake fire on there. It would look terrible. Unless you're going for, like purposely terrible look that'd be hilarious yeah okay so explosion effect nice fluffy cloud that looks like oh yeah nice just a good natural little smoke effect slow moving add some motion blur to it you wouldn't really tell but nice I like that what else we got missile smoke drag that on here Okay. So with these, I'm betting you're able to change, of course, you know, the behaviors, the look of them, the angle of them. You know, these aren't just all one drag and drop object. You know, these are, you could change the size of it. All that. Oh, yeah. You could totally mess with all of these. That's really nice. Rain, 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 go away. That. All right. Take off. Pretty cool. Hmm. All right, see you later, man. Thanks for stopping by. Sure, if we were to match the frame rate, because right now this is at 60 frames a second. So if we were to match the frame rate of this rain, I'm sure it would look a lot better. Nice rain effect. I'm liking it. Sci-fi shockwave. Let's see what that looks like. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. I like that one. That one looks really cool. I could definitely utilize that for sure. I'm sure you could change the color and whatnot. You know, that's pretty cool too. Down here, material. What is it? Cast shadows. Shininess. Change all this stuff. I like it. I like it. Trail. You can trail stuff as well. Oh, there's the color. Let's see what this looks like. We do a green trail. Yep, there we go. Man, that's cool. I'm liking that. So that's going to be cool special effects to utilize. Nice. That didn't even, like, you know, that's not even affecting my computer that strongly. You know, this effect is not, uh, not putting any kind of strain on it. Like, it's running real smooth. So we had some motion blur to it. Nice. Nice. I like that. We got some smoke. Let's see what the smoke looks like. Okay, so just general smoke. Sparks. 
Oh, look at that. Let's take away the smoke real quick. So, okay, a little spark animation of, like, if it hits... Maybe if you're, like, doing a sword battle or something like that. Or if bullets are hitting a metal wall. Choo, like that. That's pretty, Or a shotgun blast. Speed that up, and that could be, like, a quick little shotgun blast to add the effect of you actually seeing the bullet. Nice. I like that. Storm clouds. Ooh, now I'm scared. Ooh, I'm terrified. These storm clouds are spooky. I want to see what the uh, sparks look like with motion blur. One. Yeah, they look a lot better, too. Adding that motion blur. I'm loving that. Just a heads up right now. That motion blur button where you can just click it and add it. Golden. Loving that. Loving it. So those are the quick 3D ones. Nice. We got some sapphire stuff, which is just effects, you know, that aren't don't come with this. The bean. Okay, so you can adjust the scale of it, distort it. Cool. Projector. Must be its own proprietary thing. But, yeah, I'll probably mess with those a little bit later. Okay. Scopes. Histogram. Parade scope. Vector scope. It adds scopes to the... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe you can't add them to that. I don't know. That vectors. I'm not seeing it. Maybe it must be. Must be something else that I'm missing. Yeah. No idea. Oh, well, I'll mess with that later. That's pretty cool that you can add the different scopes. All right, what else we got? We have temporal. No, we, we skipped one. Sharpen. Okay, just sharpening. Oh, unsharpen on purpose. Make it pretty interesting. iPad sharpen. Stylize, cartoon, cartoonize. Okay, cool. Make a cartoon effect. Boss. Ah. Pretty cool. Oh, I like that little effect. I've seen it before. It's not new, but that's a pretty cool looking effect. Okay. Oh, you can do a ton. Look at that. All right. So you can do some style, cool stylized and effects. Temporal. Ocean trails. Ah, so we add motion trails. It kind of adds a little bit more realism or, you know, to the motion blur. Like that. Okay, cool. Motion trail is pretty nice. Yeah, I'll see if I have enough time for that. Um, I've been streaming, what, for an hour now almost? Yeah, okay. I gotta, gotta make sure I utilize time for other video editing stuff. Mm. All right. I don't know what speed does. Didn't see a noticeable difference. Time displacement. Whoa. Look at that. Just teleporting out of existence. Goodbye. Vroom. That's a pretty cool effect. I like that. Time reverse. Uh, just flips it. Boom. Hello. Right. Pretty cool. Mm. I don't know. That was really cool looking. Time displacement. It's just kind of like. I like that. Oral. Warp. Action cam warps. Bazir warps. Okay. So we're looking at just uh, vortex displacement. Oh, look at that. You can create yourself a uh, that custom warp that you can animate. I'm sure. 
So if you want to make like a another dimension pocket or something like that, you can utilize this warp. You know, put a little uh, even that energy ring around that. That would be pretty cool looking. Spherical warp. Okay, I can see that being effect like almost like a marble reflection. Quad warp. You can make it. Bezier warp. You can adjust, uh, you can drag bars to make it custom as you want. Yeah, cool. I like that. All right, so the warps are pretty cool. I could utilize those. And presets. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Here you go. Who was asking for this? Was it Q Gaming or was it BZ? The... Here we go. We got 9mm. Look at assault rifle. Total, just straight gun effects. One, take that. All right. Sixteen effects. Okay. Well, the gun one was its own deal. Or the shotgun one. There you go. So we look at all these guns that I have. Tommy guns. Okay, so you still have to animate a little bit of them. Um, except the shotgun one. That one was fully on, full on animated. Okay, Uzi, low light. Yeah, there we go. So now we have way tons of different types of muzzle flashes. That's pretty cool. All right. So that, that particle simulators. <laughs> Look at this particle aurora borealis. Nice. That looks awesome. A blizzard. Okay, now we're in straight up Alaska with firing guns. Okay. Bullet sparks. Oh, yeah. Get rid of... Get rid of blizzard so we can see the Uzi. What bullet sparks? Oh, I see him. Barely. You see him right there? Damn. Okay. All right. Aiding code. What is that, like the Matrix? Up, oh, just like the Matrix. So now we're in Alaska. We're in the Matrix, Alaska, firing guns. No, I think we're truly are in the Matrix at that point. Dragon's Breath. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is awesome. We make it like a like a wizard. You can shoot like fire. Hmm, nice. That is cool looking. Okay, so let's get the bull sparks out of there. Roar out of there. Bullet codes. Dragon Breath. Man, that is cool. Yeah, I could definitely see that stuff being utilized in some sort of fantasy deal. Okay, so Drizzle Rain. Light Rain, I see it. Okay. Dust Puff. Dude, yeah, man. These effects are awesome. What about everybody else? Beezy's loving this. How about y'all? What are y'all thinking about this? I'm liking this a ton. Fast explosion. Okay. Okay, cool. One, take off. Nice. Gun smoke, missile smoke, oil flare. Okay. Oh, so I like that. That one looks a little more realistic because of the shadow and the smoke. You can see it's actually above the fire. Adds a motion blur to it. Yeah, I could see that looking pretty realistic. Nice. Okay. Get that out of there. We got some more rain. We got some snow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could see these effects being utilized a ton. Sparks. Sparks. Let's see. Oh, again, that shotgun one. I see. Okay. What about storm clouds? Time tunnel. Time tunnel. Oh. Whoa. See what that looks like. One, take off. Dang. Look away if you get if you're epileptic or epileptic. 
I don't want uh, no seizures happening, but that is cool. Tornado. Nice. That's pretty cool, like a distant tornado in the distance to add some motion blur to it. Still about the same. Pretty awesome. We probably have to blur that up, you know, add some like effect to make it a little bit blurry because nobody can see individual wind streaks. But that's really cool. Blur that up, make it look real nice. Nice. These are really cool presets. Let's see what some quick 3D presets are. Barrage. One. Take off. That's just a one. A long one, I see. Take off. Okay. Blue plasma shock wave. One. Take off. Similar to that other one. Okay. Flame shock wave. Oh, I probably just changed the color of it. Yeah. One. Take off. Nice. Got some green ripple shock. What's this? Uh, just another variation of that. Still really cool. Okay. Gray smoke ball, large flame explosion. Okay, that one looks pretty cool. Magic fireball. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, that one looks really awesome. Motion blur to it. A little bit look a little better. Okay, cool. Cool. Got mystical fire. Take off. And I could absolutely see motion tracking these onto like a, a empty goblet or something like that. And then you got Harry Potter's goblet of fire. Woo! Okay, phaser. I like that little little laser. Star travel. Oh no, I don't want to delete that. I like that. Star travel. Ah, there we go. Now we're in a ship in space. All right, those are some cool little 3D ones. What else we got? Some film looks. Oh look at that. They have pre-done a lot of pre-done film effects. what nuclear skin looks like whoa fallout cool mild warmth okay so like kind of their own version of little lutz seventies photo pretty cool that looks like it's all the, you know, just a ton of different film looks. What is this 2D effects? I think I skipped that. Hologram? What is that? Oh. Nice. That was a little cool TV look. Nice. You could add that. And then if you just the, uh, put that on, like, somebody's wrist, you know, come up, be like, and then that could come up and look like a hologram. Check out my wife running like the Flash. Bam. Nice. Green screen key, shock wave for displacement. Ah. Pretty cool. Water hose. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> Oh, blood spray just, you know, that's uh, changed around, I see. Motion blur, what's that look like? A little bit more realistic with motion blur? A little bit. Okay, so the 2D presets. Nice, okay, so that's looking like it's a ton of the effects. I'm actually not even seeing bez the masking in this one at all, the motion tracking. Let's see if we search for it. And... Or trails. Hmm. Um, what a mask. Full screen depth masking. Bezier warp. I don't know how to do it. I haven't done it yet. I'll have to figure that out. May not be on this stream, unfortunately. 
got that. Now, let's look at... So we've seen all this stuff. We've seen what history does, what text does. Layouts, so you can change the layouts of your specific scene as well. That's true. Yeah, FX Home, they're, they're a pretty good partner for Magix, for sure. I think them making this program is awesome because it, it utilizes the ease of... Uh, um, the ease of Vegas, which, you know, Vegas is one of the easiest editors to ever use entirely, but throws it onto this aspect, compositing and special effects. I, I could see this being friggin' awesome. So, let's, what else we got? So what are, the, what are the things in here? Hmm. I don't have any green screen footage of me, uh, so I can't do any kind of green screen. I'll have to do that in a future video. Well, let's see. Let's we mute this. Go to this. Our lower thirds. Let's look at some rendering options. You know, we haven't seen that yet. So we're gonna render this. It ends at looks like three three seconds. So okay, let's see. I think there was two ways of doing this. If we go to export context or in and out area. Um so let's do export. Let's see what's the difference. Export content. Composite shots have been added to the export queue. Please switch to the export screen when we begin exporting. Let's go to the export screen. Okay. We have our shot. Our out. Oh, in and out. Okay, so it's just you choose to tell what time you want. Okay, so we want it to be three seconds. Okay, cool. Duration three seconds. Export. Now contents. Contents will probably be everything. So, see what. Let's do contents. See what it does. Okay. Never composite shot down here. Duration. Oh, that's what it is. Ah, so that's the difference. So contents is your entire timeline. So that was two and a half, two and a half hours. What was that? Oh no, that's two minutes thirty seconds. We don't want that. So in and out is a specific time you want to render. That makes sense. So then you have your queue down here. So we get rid of these. We don't want these. Um, let's see what the presets they have are. So you can render in MP4. AAC audio only. Well, definitely should. It's pretty awesome, man. Uh, you can at render. They have presets for Apple's, uh, Apple, Apple iPads and iPhones, Facebook, GoPro. Got PNG sequences, picture sequences, uncompressed AVI, Vimeo HD, YouTube. So it just kind of like kills the uh, kills the wonder of what's the best quality for YouTube. Oh, we'll just choose YouTube right there. Bam, you got it. Best quality for YouTube. Um, so another thing we want to look about is because we have our shot, our lower thirds we created has an alpha channel and an alpha channel is basically a removable channel um, that is put there. Well, it's, it's like a background that you can remove. That's just essentially what it really is. So you can you can mute the alpha channel and apply your lower thirds to other videos without, without having the back, black background. And so it looks like from what our options are. We can render in GoPro Cineform RGB 12-bit with an alpha channel. And then we could open do an open XER sequence, which is a, it looks like an image sequence with an alpha channel, a PNG sequence with an alpha channel, or an uncompressed AVI with an alpha channel. So I rendered a couple of these already. And uncompressed AVI, I think I did a five-second clip, which I'll show you guys. It's fine. Um, oh, excuse me. Okay. So let's render this. Let's choose that. Desktop renders new folder renders here. We'll call this one uh, test. Save it. Now we have the output. So we choose our preset, which which changes our format. Our duration, we could change that up here. Our output, we tell it where we want. And then start export down here at the bottom. See what it is. So it has your time elapsed, time remaining. It has to think about it. And over here at the bottom right, okay, bottom right, it shows your preview. All right, for a three second clip, it took 13 seconds. So let's look at file. Drag it in here. Test our three second. <laughs> look at that. Our three second video is 1.39 gigabytes. 
That is huge. What is way big. But that's uncompressed for you. That's like the purest quality and color and everything in Alpha Channel. The cleanest key you can have for it. That is Humongo. Let's see what else we got. What other options? So another thing that I noticed that was similar to After Effects is you can right click and you can duplicate this task so you don't have to change anything. Uh, like, you know, name or duration. You just change the output sequence. So let's see what Cineform RGB 12-bit with Alpha is. Export that. Actually, let's do a couple while we're here because you can export multiple at a time. So I want to do it in that. I also want to do it in PNG sequence with Alpha. So we do that. Start exporting. Here, while it's exporting, I'll show you this. So there's our GoPro Cineform one. Done. Our test three. So I guess the difference is if you don't really know, um, if you don't really know the what a PNG sequence is, it's I've used it a lot. It's it's actually one of the better things you could do for lower thirds because you can add PNG sequences into Vegas. Um, yeah, that is that's a fa an awesome one. Uh, so you can add a PNG sequence into Vegas, and it actually acts as an entire movie clip or a file as well. So the PNG PNG sequence is the lowest file size for exporting lower thirds that I've that I've seen before. So that our our three second thing is only nine point seven megabytes of pictures, but it has each each frame. If you have sixty frames a second, it's gonna do sixty times however many seconds, and that's how many pictures you're gonna have. But if you upload these into Vegas, you're gonna say, hey, this is a sequence. This is the first picture. This is the last picture, and then it makes it a video file, and then you can add that onto your videos as a lower third for no, um, you know, no stress on your computer if you, you know, didn't want to drag and drop the 1.39 uncompressed AVI on there. Um, and then test two looks like this GoPro Cineform Alpha.mov is only 63 megabytes. Huh, so that could be an option, a really good option as well. If it's only 63 megabytes for a .mov for that, I, and if it's Alpha channels removable, that's pretty awesome too. So then, cool. I like that. I like that. All right, so what else we got? So we've done that. Um, it looks like you can create your own user presets. Okay, look at that. So you can right click and you can create your own. I want to create my own MOV. Tell what you want. Use the source dimensions. Aspect ratio, whoops. Keep aspect ratio. Channels, RGB and alpha. There we go. So then, The RGB alpha. How how high quality do we want? Do the highest quality film scan too. Probably does like two passes. We can choose to include or not include audio. Cool. Go, so codec. Let's go pro Cineform. You can't change that. So dot dot mov. For dot .movs, it looks like we only have GoPro as the option. I have a lot of codecs installed on my computer already, so if more options were available for this QuickTime.mov format, then I'd be seeing them for sure right here, but I'm not seeing them. So it looks like GoPro Cineform is the only option we have for rendering as a codec for, um, for dot .movs. So let's hit cancel and see what the AVI looks like. Or MP4. We have a bunch of MP4 stuff. So MP4... Usually, from my experience, you cannot um, include and render an alpha channel with MP4. So you can't make like an MP4 lower third um, or anything like that. So you can tell it the bit rate. Okay, so you just have all the options you could do right here. Tell it the bit rate, source, profile level, coding, variable bit rate, constant bit rate. Nice. You have all the regular options there. Let's see what the AVI has to offer. Okay. So we have our codex. We can do GoPro Cineform AVI as well. It's if you wanted the GoPro Cineform codec without, um, without it being an AV, without it being an MOV, you can make it. Or, yeah, you can make it an AVI. Nice. And that also includes RGBA. Let's see what that is. Let's see. So we, we can do an, a .AVI, but with the GoPro codec, maybe it can be a lower file size, but still an AVI file. So let's make one. Keep aspect ratio, keep all that, film scan, one. Let's make it, let's just see what the highest quality is we can do. We're going to call this 
test go pro avi cool that okay to that choose our there it is test go pro avi see what that looks like starting code okay Okay, so look at that. So we got we got an AVI with a GoPro codec, and it's only 68 megabytes, but an AVI file. So maybe that'll work out pretty good too when you make lower thirds. So that and that we made sure to choose it had a removable uh, had a preset. It has the the alpha channel, so we have a removable removable alpha channel. Looks pretty good. Hopefully that works out just fine. All right. So what we have done? Let's recap a little bit. Um, so let's see, where are we at? We want to go back. We do view to our edit. Okay, so if, you, if you're in the export window, you don't know how to get back. You can do view, edit, or you get back to your edit window. So for everybody just joining now, if you're here, uh, we made some lower thirds. We checked out all the effects. We went to the ins and outs of Vegas effects. Vegas effects is the video effects special ed or special effects video editing portion of the Vegas Post package. Vegas Post consists of Vegas Pro, Vegas Effects, and Vegas Image. Three different programs can make up Vegas Post. Vegas Effects is just like After Effects, maybe has a little bit less features, but still really awesome as this whole what is it? Hour and a half, hour and a half stream has been. So it's really awesome. We made some lower thirds. We checked out all the effects you could do. I saw a lot of potential for some really, really awesome stuff. Um, what else we got? We made some some key things I like to point out is that it has the automatic motion blur button right here. That's amazing. That's something that I'm glad they added for sure. Um, has the ability to just make your special effects go awesomely. Really, really cool. Um, yeah, if, if you want to see all about this program, you know, this stream's going to stay on YouTube, so you can go from the beginning uh, all the way to the end, and you'll see all the stuff that we have done today. Um, we didn't get it to any motion tracking. Um, I'm going to have to figure that one a little bit more, read into it, because I don't want to be fiddling around with it and, you know, wasting time or making it kind of boring on the stream. So um, I'll, I'll make some videos on that one. Uh, expect videos for Vegas Effects, Vegas Image, um, and more Vegas Pro 17 tutorials. Um, now I got so much content on my plate to create that I'm going to be following a new schedule. If you have seen, um, I posted on you know Twitter and Facebook and and everything saying that I'm doing a schedule now. So every Monday and Thursday, and all right, BZ, thanks for stopping by. You take it easy, man. Um, every Monday and Thursday, I'll be making a tutorial for either Vegas 17 or uh, Vegas Effects or something. Um, more or less, it's going to be a Vegas product. And then sprinkled in between there is going to be uh, other random videos, maybe like a Stream Elements video or um, some other tutorial for a different program. And then also, I stream some video games with my wife. We play lots of co-op-based stuff, kind of like Borderlands and Splinter Cell. Uh, fun stuff like that, and just have a general good time, typically on Wednesdays, Fridays, or Saturdays, sometimes Sundays. So, I guess future plans, just in case anybody's wondering, um, tutorials are definitely on the plate. Game-wise, um, I, I, we plan on playing Ghost Recon Breakpoint and Borderlands 3 when that comes out, so um, expect some cool Borderlands stuff and, and uh, you know Ghost Recon stuff. Um, in a month or so um, giveaway, I am uh, about to announce the Vegas Pro 15 giveaway winner. Uh, if you haven't got an email already, you most likely did not win. Just a heads up. Um, but once I get confirmation, usually I wait for confirmation back. So because there's a lot of spam and bot accounts that enter giveaways and that just enter it and then never respond back to anything. And it's like I have to filter through all that. And then um, so once we have that. Once, once I have the confirmation on the winner, um, then I'll be posting a video announcing that. And then I'll announce my second giveaway. So if you guys, well, not second, but my next giveaway. So if you have any options for what you want to see given away, you know, um, I'm open to give away, you know, 
like video games, you know, stuff like that. I give away a lot of video games. I've given away over a hundred video games. Um, and then I can't, I'm still buying all this stuff out of my own pocket. And so I can't necessarily afford, uh, you know, full copy of Vegas for everybody. You know, it's kind of like a hit and miss thing. And if, um, if Magix and the Vegas team decide to give me a copy to give to y'all, that's perfectly fine. I'll give you guys a copy, no problem at all. But as for, I can't just drop that kind of money. I'm not rich. Sorry. But as for a new game, you know, maybe I can give away a, ghost, a copy of Ghost Recon Breakpoint, a copy of Borderlands 3, or something like that. You know, you guys let me know what you want in the future. You know, I, I'm kind of gearing my channel towards a more, uh, you know, subscriber oriented deal you know of course i'm doing what i love doing which is video editing but i want to also include you all and you know that's why i do featured comments and stuff like that and i like to interact with all my followers you know all you guys watching right now i love it thank you all for coming here you know that's awesome i appreciate you guys checking it out um so yeah if you guys you know just let me know in the comments what you want you know in all these in all these future videos you know what do you want what, what, what you want to see in giveaways, what kind of videos you want to see, you know, that, stuff like that. And I'll do my best to shift it all towards you know, what you guys want, because I want you guys to stick around as long as possible. So that is, I think it's going to wrap it up. About an hour and a half long stream showing you guys how to make some lower thirds in the new Vegas effects. If you guys want to try this out, Vegas effects is, uh, Vegas Post is free to try. They have a demo. You go to the link in the description below. Uh, I believe it's on that web. They have it on there. You can try the demo out. Um, or if they don't have it on there, it will be on there very soon. I know that there is a demo version. So you can basically do everything I'm doing right now, except there's just, of course, a big watermark that says, oh, this is the demo version. Um, but everything everything I've done would be available for you guys to do. So, yeah, that's going to be it, I would say. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. You guys are awesome. And... Thanks for supporting the channel and being awesome Scrapyard fans, and I'll see you guys later.